What's going on guys? Welcome to another video tutorial brought to you by the Minecrafters. I'm Captain Jack and in this video we are going to be showing you how to automate the creation of quantum entangled singularities. Alright, so in order to make this manually, this is how you do it. Take a piece of tiny TNT or regular TNT, I guess it doesn't matter. Make sure you throw a singularity, a piece of ender dust, and then a redstone signal. Blow it up and you get your quantum entangled singularity. Bam. Done. Alright, now we don't have time to do that every single time that we want a quantum entangled singularity. We want a system that does this automatically for us. Now, since this stuff is, is late game, I mean literally you're building wireless AE, you're going to have a lot of stuff set up already. So I'm going to assume that you got this, you know, this stuff going already. Um, some sort of crafting um, uh, rig here, and uh, you're going to need the ability to make tiny TNT. So I have the pattern in encoded there, two certus and two gunpowder equals a tiny TNT. The molecular assembler will make that. And also I have this encoded to make ender dust. So that's going to take one ender pearl, put it inside this pulverizer, and that's going to give me a piece of ender dust. All right, so in order to automatically throw the ender dust and the singularity on the ground, I'm using an AA uh, automatic precision dropper, and that's going to drop those two things in the floor. In order to place the TNT, I'm using an auto placer. So the difference between this one and this one is this just drops stuff on the ground, but this places an item in the world. And because of the way TNT behaves, once it's lit, it will drop. So this is placing the, the TNT against a block of a redstone. The redstone is lighting it, and that's going to fall on the floor and create the singularity. And we're going to see that right now. So this is going to grind up my ender pearl dust. Those two things just dropped in the ground. They're going to explode and they're going to get sucked into my system. And I create my quantum entangled singularity. Now, how does this work and why do I have this chest here? So because the TNT needs to be placed and the other two items need to be dropped, I actually need them to be split. So what I did was I put an ME interface on top of a chest and that's using an encoded pattern to create the quantum entangled singularity. So basically what it's doing is it's using one tiny TNT, as you can see there, one ender dust and one singularity. It's throwing them into the diamond chest. This is automatically sucking out the ingredients. And down here is the, the TNT. And up here is the um, ender dust and the singularity. So they go two separate directions. Once they're in both of those machines, the TNT drops, the other two ingredients drop, they explode, and then they get sucked into this vacuum chest. Now, it's really important that you set your vacuum chest to only filter the completed product because if you don't do this, it's going to just suck in all the ingredients immediately, and then you're going to have a problem. So as soon as that's done, the vacuum chest sucks it in. I have it attached to an import bus, and you've automatically created your quantum entangled singularity. So if I was to just basically end the video right there and tell you, yeah, you got your machine and you're done, I would be doing you a huge disservice because there is a really big problem with how this works. So what's going to happen is I'm going to request my quantum entangled singularity. Let me use the wireless one so you guys can see it happening. I'm going to request this and I'm going to hit craft. So it's going to make my tiny TNT. It's going to crush my ender pearl into ender dust. Um, it's going to give me a couple quantum entangled singularities. So I'm going to craft that. My ingredients drop in the floor. You're going to automatically get sucked up into my vacuum chest and voila. Now, I obviously have my quantum entangled singularities. Like, they're there. It's done. I accomplished the goal that I wanted to. However, because the two of these contain, like, slightly different IDs, um, it never finishes the craft. Literally, this is always going to be here. Now, if you don't care and you want to just walk over to this and cancel it, that's perfectly fine. But I will give you guys a workaround for this. And I'm sure there's more than one way to do this, but I'll just show you how I did it real quick. So if you were attentive, you would have noticed that I added some stuff here to make this thing work. So watch this. What I did was I put the regular pattern, right? The ender dust, the TNT, the singularity, that's going to all go through the system as normal. But I also added a piece of wool and the outcome is actually string. So basically what I'm doing is I'm tricking the system into thinking it's making string, which it is, but also it's making me two quantum entangled singularities. So I'm gonna throw these out. So what I did was I attached this to the same chest. So this is making a piece of string, except what's happening is the string is getting sucked out and going into a pulverizer, which legitimately will make you know string. The system will recognize that the string is done. However, all of the other ingredients for the QED will fall on the floor and I'll actually make it. So that is one of the workarounds for this. 
unfortunately, it's going to get convoluted in the middle of all your other resources. So what I'm going to recommend is that you not use string like I did um, and that you use a more rare material or something that's you're never going to have a lot of. Um, so I'm going to make this piece of string, and the string's going to get made. You can see the thing lit up there, but also my QED is getting made. Um, so kind of a win-win. So yeah, use use something besides string. Use some random item um, that you're going to recognize as the quantum entangled singularity recipe, and you will have no problem with your crafting system getting backed up. So here's a little bit of bonus content on this video. Um, you should know by now how to make a singularity, right? You put a ME um, 64K storage component inside a matter condenser, feed it a bunch of garbage, it eventually, you know, gets up to 256,000, and then you get your singularity. But how do you do this without burning up every single resource that you have in your AE system? Well, really quickly, and I'm just going to kind of skim over this real quickly because this is not really part of the video. Um, what I have here is a matter condenser hooked up to six different phantom faces, all hooked up to export buses with max acceleration card upgrades set to chisels and bits water. So they're exporting chisels and bits water. Basically, the phantom faces act as an additional side or sides to the matter condenser once they're linked up with the phantom linker. And then I'm using the chisels and bits fluid tank. I'm pumping water out of sinks and into those tanks so they stay full all the time. I've attached three storage buses onto the chisels and bits fluids tank. So if you saw earlier that this was flying in and out, this is what's happening. It's breaking down that block of water into 10,000 little chisels and bits and it's using those to uh, basically get thrown into the matter condenser to make a ton of um, singularities really quickly. If you want to know more about that machine, hit us up on our Discord channel and I'll answer any questions that you might have. Otherwise, guys, that's it for this video. Stay poised for more to come.